everybody, and welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are here for another episode, the penultimate episode of Atari Twilight. We're going to jump right into things here today, so let's go with our introductions. We'll start with Metamancer. Meta, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And who are you playing today? The ultimate question in life, who are you? Right. Really? Truth. Um, yeah. Anyway, hi guys, I'm Metamancer. I am a role player, game master, and artist. Uh, you guys can find me on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash metamancer or on Twitter at the metamancer. And yeah, I'm looking forward to today's episode. I'll be playing Shannon. Perfect. Uh, and with uh, George Butts out of the way, our clearly new leader, Frags, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And who are you playing today? Uh, yeah, I'm KW Frags. You can find me here or on Twitter, same name, or on the Discord. And I am, uh, I'm playing not George Butts, I'm playing Robert Ott, or Rob Ott. Uh, you know, he's just a stuttering little weirdo. Perfect. And his story, his story continues to amaze. Wow. Uh, coming off the back of that amazement, uh, Mr. Bitters, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And who are you playing today? You really want to leave me with a segue, like, coming off the back of that? Like, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm Mr. Bitters. I, I, you can find me here. Uh, I, I pretty much just give Mike shit. Uh, I'll be playing Jerry Baker. He's he's a big fat asshole, and uh, you know he gets stuff done with superpowers. But who are you playing today? Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of playing the roles we were made for, Greg, who are you? Uh, where can we find you on the internet? And uh, tell us about Atari Twilight. First off, I don't like the way that there is the, this, this talk of Jerry being a big fat asshole and, and, and you know, don't disparage Rob and Jerry and uh, Shannon never disparages herself. So, but everybody else, <laughs> these are great characters. Let's see them through in the penultimate episode. Rah, rah. One for the Gipper, one for the McKenzie. Okay, so... Grimjack21502 and the Twitches and the Twitters. I cannot wait. We are in, this is our second to last episode of Atari Twilight for this season. It is entitled Secret Wars. And this is where everything that's happened before needs to get figured out because next week's episode is entitled The Never Ending Story. And we will see exactly if that is a lie or not by the end of this one. Hell yeah. Uh, perfect. Before we jump into things, guys, check out our sponsor, The Dice of Rolling. They're a complete set of polyhedral dice. Uh, use coupon code UMG for a dollar off. They're great for stocking stuffers. Um, and check the description down below for all the things you can donate for exclusively to this game. Uh, that being said, Greg, take us into the 80s that never was. And for the second to last time this season, let us return to the 1987 that never was. Let us return to Garrett, Maryland, which is home to not only the kids that you see around you, but we have fallen soldiers as George and Sam and even Veronica and some others have dropped off along the way as the evil or whatever is currently running the loop seems to be taking over for this small neck of the nape. And as we look at Garrett, Maryland in the 1987 that never was, and as we drill even farther down to the events of last episode, as we always say, you have to go back to go forward. So what did happen? In a nut nutshell, and because we do have a bit to get to tonight, I will simply say this. An area was identified. People had been taken. Loved ones were presumably captured in this space up along the edge of the loop. It was a space that the kids went to with the help of Mr. Derry and his stolen LeBaron, uh, the help of Shannon, who was the only one that had the guts to actually steal the LeBaron, uh, drove it through the town of Garrett, picked up everyone, and after much debating on what would be needed to equip themselves for this excursion into enemy territory, they traveled north, and as luck would have it, they were able to retrieve not only May, the daughter of Ping from Ping's fine family uh, Chinese cuisine, but also Mitch's mom. However, the other loved ones that they had, by use of the video player scene, gone into this place that they knew their presence existed, Sam, uh, Veronica, uh, Shannon's friends, Dutch, and Barney, none of them were there but there were empty cells that seemed to indicate that they once had been. 
However, as soon as the group went into this, this ancillary or this satellite office of the loop, they were sealed within. And it seemed that only George Butts, somehow able to pass for his father among the walls here of the loop, entered into a security, uh, a secure area and was able to open the gate that prevented the kids from escaping. When last we left George, he had to go deeper into the facility to escape where he met his father along a catwalk and there they began to do battle. The whereabouts of George Butts is unknown. He never emerged from inside the facility and it was only until just the break of dawn when activity prompted the kids to return to Garrett do we pick up this story as instead of north, they are traveling south? I can only assume that Shannon is back behind the wheel of the LeBaron. Both of their rescued kidnappees in May and Mitch's mom are incredibly confused. They don't remember being taken, yet at the same time, they remember people that match the descriptions of Sam and Veronica, of Dutch and Barney, and then they forget them. It's as if they are having moments and waves of amnesia. Um, May seems to be a bit more together, but she can't remember how she was abducted. She can't remember anything, but she is beside Rob as they ride in the LeBaron. And they are headed south. And just at that time, with the snow flying on this December 4th, 1987, we see the town of Garrett below us. And before I describe what you see, I will give you a few minutes to say whatever it is would be on your mind, the absence of George Butts being felt, perhaps not uh, emotionally, but definitely as a fallen soldier as now both Sam and George have been lost. What do you guys do? I think Mitch would be comforting his mom. Uh, they're, they're, they're in the back seat, and I assume she's in some kind of like near catatonic state, although that doesn't look different from her usual state, at least not to Mitch. Um, but he can he can sense the difference in what this is, um, and he's he's consoling her in whatever way a thirteen year old can. Uh, I think that he has like he has like an arm around her and he's like trying to pat her back or something um, as he's trying to like coax answers out of her like very quietly in the back seat. You get bits and pieces of things that don't really make a whole lot of sense, Mitch. You, um, you've heard her ramblings before just because of her alcoholism. And it seems like she's remembering things, but as May seems to be able to be, you can comprehend her a bit more. You begin to believe it might just be because of the disease your mom is suffering from that she's having more of a lot more problems putting things together. Um, just random thoughts, the trailers moving, who are you, where am I? A lot of questions, a lot of blank gazes. She fixates on you quite a bit, but um, she has very little answers for you. Plus she's been dry for like a week. So that's, that probably- Presumably is. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Everybody Anybody else doing anything? I think I think Jerry's just stewing. Um, he'd hope to go in and like accomplish a lot more, but he he's, he kind of feels like we left with what we could and uh, lost too much. So he really doesn't have a whole lot to say. Shannon's just driving quietly. She's not saying anything because she she said she hoped that. They would find him on the other side, but not that's not what happened, so. Right, and she was the last one to see George as she was the last to quit that area through the blue veil of energy. Um, so as May kind of, her head bounces on the shoulder of Rob as you all drive and head up the rise, and then Garrett, Maryland is revealed to you to the south and to the east. 
I would like everybody that is familiar with the show to pull up your Spotify playlist. Uh, and the top track on today's Spotify playlist is Guns N' Roses' Welcome to the Jungle. And so as you crest, Shannon, and come down into Garrett, without the need for a roll, the first thing you see as you look down on this small town, all the haunts that you have gone to, from the Maplehurst Mall in the distance, to the Red Oaks Bowling Alley, to the Pool Hall, to the strip mall that contains the paperback exchange, you all see nearly four dozen black SUVs that are patrolling the streets. You're muted, Mike. You are still muted. Am, am I muted now? <laughs> Do we all see that? <laughs> uh, anybody that looks out the front window would see that there are all of these cars, all of these black SUVs, at least, like I said, four dozen in number, most of them are at rest. Some of them seem to be going up and down the streets, but the only vehicles that are moving in Garrett are these black SUVs. I think Shannon would slow down and stop outside, like, to stay out of view. Greg, do these black SUVs look like the ones that were at the post office? At the UPS depot and the yeah. one that George's dad was driving when he came to the uh, the grav, grav truck uh, graveyard. Ooh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I think only did, was it just Mitch and um, uh, Jerry that saw those? Like, who got out of them? Yes. Okay, um, yeah, he he would he would kind of lean forward and uh, uh, towards towards uh, towards Shannon and be like, uh, Sh Sh Shannon, they're they're all from the loop. Okay, what do we do? I don't know. Jerry and I ran into them before you found him. They were they were at the post office. They were trying to get. I think they were trying to get the package that was with your name on it. The, the Grimlock package. They you think they were looking for me? I think they're looking for all of us. We just kind of attacked their facility. Well, we didn't attack it, technically. I mean, plus, they we maybe trespassed on it. Well, they also knew that we were coming because of the. And he, he nods towards the the tape deck, the missing tape deck. As you do nod towards the tape deck, you see that the digital readout clock that's mounted in the dashboard reads 6.54 in the morning. That was very specific, Greg. <laughs> Does that uh, mean something? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Let me check my notes. <laughs> um... Yeah, he, he kind of looks at you and says, I, I I don't know where to go. I, I have nowhere to go except for the truck. Would I it mean, be hard to get to the truck unnoticed? I mean, we could... We kind of need to bring we, we could probably the both to, of them somewhere safe. I don't think we can just bring them back home or, we could in your case, you don't really have... What's his house? No one's home. That's a little risky. Just, 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 just drive c c casually. Um, considering whose vehicle we have, I don't think that's an option. They would know, given the circumstances of what we found in the car. You know, I don't think this is an anonymous vehicle. Butts' house is too close to that that house that disappeared anyway. That's true. I, other than the trucks, I don't, I don't know where to go. Well, can we get there unnoticed? That's the question. I, 
he kind of looks out the window and says, I, I, I think we're the only ones on the road. Okay, so we don't drive on the road. This is a Chrysler LeBaron. I know. It do you want to walk there? I mean, it doesn't do well on ro- off road. <laughs> barely. Does. I'll make a certain distance. <laughs> it barely does well on road. <laughs> It'll still make a distance. That we don't. Have that to is walk. the greatest advertisement for the Chrysler LeBaron ever. Off road. It'll make it a certain distance. <laughs> I think that was actually one of the ads. In Sharon, Sharon later goes into uh, marketing. Yeah. <laughs> Sharon in 2001. <laughs> she's a marketing exec. Um, I mean, if you think you can get this thing to the graveyard. Well, I sure can try. Okay, as you all finish talking, and as you are, as mentioned in the narrative, parked so you can overlook the city, but you are hidden to the point where you assume you're, you haven't been spotted as no one's reacting to your presence. When the digital readout goes from 6.59 to 7 o'clock in the morning, you see several from your eyesight, from the areas that you can see from this kind of elevated position, houses, homes, commercial areas open and you see people running and screaming out of the homes chasing them you see several of these which you have coined decepticons many of them wearing the suits and the kind of zip up uh jumpers from the loop as they are running down the people in garrett maryland as you watch Several people are hogtied and thrown into the back of the nearest SUV. Whatever SUV is closest to their capture, they are deposited within. The entirety of Garrett seems to be chaos. And now the situation for the group that is watching their hometown devolve into something from Lord of the Flies or Battlefield Earth you have friends in this town you have family in this town what this session will give you is the ability to save them whoever is currently in the town that you believe could help you in your quest to make things right to escape whatever your quest might be tell me who they are and you may begin to try to extract them from Garrett or if you would rather attempt to escape that is quite possible I would just let you know there is a clock in play the assets that you have gained throughout the course of this season are also in play it is up to you who or what you deem worthy of saving I just realized the two people that can call the fucking tree fairy back are gone Shit. <laughs> um, man. Uh, did we did we have a confirmation who was at the the um, Ganon? I believe we did. Uh, according to the video that you saw, it was of course your mom. It was May. You also saw that Veronica and uh, Sam were both there, but they were not there whenever you entered the facility. Okay. Also uh, shown going in there, the very earliest uh, incarcerated people going in there were Dutch and Barney, okay. but they were back. That was back in June. Got it. Uh, and we're just in the middle of of, of Garrett. About to get wrecked. You're, you're looking down on it. Okay. Um. Shannon would probably say that. Well, she probably would have said it before, but Mr. Derry probably would be a good person to get, get to. Uh, from the perspective of he might know what the heck reason that thing was in his car, if he knew. Um, that would be one suggestion. Um, yeah, I mean, the, for the suggestions, we have Ben, Mr. Derry, as you said, uh, 
my dad is somewhere. Uh, and Mrs. Butts is equally as unsafe as uh, Ben because they're in the same hospital. Correct. Yeah, the, the NPCs that you have interacted with to this point that are currently in play in Garrett are uh, Gary and Maggie from the Paperback Exchange, Mr. Derry, the Sarge, uh, Interim Police Chief Simmons, uh, Mr. Mitchell, otherwise known as the Predator, Old Jeff, the neighbor, and also George's mom and Ben McKenzie, who are both at the hospital. Um, Ben's gonna do, or Ben, Rob. Rob's gonna, Rob's gonna do a complete 180 and decide he wants to save his parents. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I think Rob's main concern at this point is making sure that May gets home safe. So, or he May gets somewhere safe and is with her mom. <laughs> So I think Rob would probably want to go try to save Miss Miss Ping, or at least try to see if she's okay, because that's what May would want to know when she comes around. Uh, shit. If Rob mentions that to to like the car, Shannon would object to trying to find. To find deep people who can't help with the threat. Just saying that. Tactically speaking, Sharon would want to find the people that can do the most good. And while she would love to go find her mom, even though they don't talk often, she knows that her mom won't be able to do anything. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I fully understand that. I'm just saying that's Rob would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Rob would want to do. He doesn't care who can help. No, I know. I'm saying if he were to voice that to the people in the vehicle. Well, then, if that's the case, then we need to find Mr. Derry. Mr. Derry, yeah. Maybe we should get Ben. He seemed to know a lot more than. Maybe he can't talk, but. Yeah, but what if he needs the machines to stay alive he was on the machine so I'll, 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 I'll steal an ambulance or something you can just steal an ambulance oh, well all right sure i mean nobody's gonna be paying attention yeah i mean i guess it makes more of a sense to be a command vehicle that's much bigger than the libertarian that's true too <laughs> okay hold on before i go to these things okay we need to get them out of the way because they're not in any capacity to help with what's going on. I want to help Ben as much as everybody else, but I mean, it's it's crazy down there. Look at it. They're so? pulling out all the stops. We can't just walk into that. We what don't. We, do? we, we gotta get... We gotta get Mr. Derry. Okay, so... Do we split our attention? Do you guys want to go get one group? I'll go to the hospital. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> Greg, don't make that face. You fucking monster. Out of out of character. I love doing this for GMs. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it, it's not a bad plan. We can cover more ground that way. Yeah, that's true. But the bikes are at the uh, at Teletran too. Well, we need to get there first and drop these two off. Uh, yeah, by the way, a vehicle, uh, I have your, your current vehicle locations. Obviously, you have the LeBaron. The bikes are at Teletran 2. The Pingmobile was at Teletran 2. But the motorcycle belonging to uh, Shannon is actually at the middle school, where she parked it, hit it, and then jumped into the LeBaron. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's just get to Teletran yeah, yeah. 2 Teletran first. 2, yeah. And we'll, yeah, we're going to try to go through the woods. <laughs> Off-road oh, style. Oh, you're, you're taking, okay, so the, oh, the yeah. we'll yeah, put sure. through the paces yeah. here. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, let's give it, let's give it the, the, the old college try here with the LeBaron. As, um, let's do... I'm going to do a series of rolls here just to see what we can accomplish. The first one being a 
Let's do a tinker check, and I will allow this to be from anyone in the car. And uh, then I would like to have a an investigate check from somebody in the car. Investigate is to figure out back roads, so you guys can kind of stay on loosely road-like surfaces and um, see if you can't skirt Garrett proper to get to where you need to go. And then the uh, tinker is, if something does happen to the LeBaron, recognizing it before the LeBaron doesn't work anymore. I will tinker. I can investigate since I'm driving unless somebody else thinks they know the back roads better. I have uh, three to investigate. Uh, 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 but I don't know. I feel like you've probably been driving longer. So, yes, that's true. That's, you know, you're of the age where driving is kind of a big deal. Yeah. So. Kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. It's part of my freedom <laughs> as a teenager, you know. Uh, all right. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's. Two successes okay. for Tinker. Investigate. Or not. It could just, there it goes. Yeah. <sighs> there it goes as it creeps through. Uh, and because Shannon is at the steering wheel of the LeBaron, let's go ahead and cue up Shannon's theme song of U2's Sunday Bloody Sunday to take us down into the forests around Garrett as the LeBaron begins to dip down into washed out dirt roads as you guys are taking little more than hunting trails usually reserved for four by four vehicles but somehow the lebaron is holding its own here a little bit the wheels slip uh it drags um sometimes you hit dips where the long ass end of this thing takes about a two or three foot uh you don't lose a bumper but you come damn close you've made it halfway through <laughs> Uh, your trek, as you know, you're getting kind of parallel to where the trade winds would be. You're kind of close to um, Jerry's house. And so, again, I will ask for a tinker check and an investigate check. <laughs> it's almost like you're dancing. I was. <laughs> Two more successes for tinker. <sighs> I'm literally holding my breath the entire time until that shows up. I don't know why it's so delayed. That's okay. As uh, as you're going through, Shannon, uh, or uh, uh, Meta, as Shannon is kind of focusing on this road, just absolutely looking for washouts or anything that even looks suspect, you're slowing down to make sure you don't lose an edge or a tire hits a rut or you guys get washed or, or beached somewhere you are able to make it through until about a half mile away from the grav truck graveyard when two fallen trees seem to have been dropped over this trail and you can't get the LeBaron to go any closer but you've made it about a half mile to Teletran too. We're a half a mile away from it? Yep, through the okay. woods, half mile through the woods. Well, I told you we got some distance, okay? Yeah, I, I promise you that much. You, farther than I thought. Um, we might have to walk the rest of the way. Uh, can you get the... Ne or speed mind. walk. Never mind. Wait, what? <laughs> Don't gonna, say never mind like that. I, I was going to ask if you could get it back out, but I, it's just fine where it is. <laughs> the car. What? It's probably fine Wait. where it is. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, there's... Well, I could go backwards, but that would be farther away from where we're going. No, I, I just... It's not important. It's, it's Mr. Derry's car. Um, Whatever. Okay. He had, like, a thing in the... We did him a favor, really. Oh, all right. <laughs> and he starts to, like, open the door. <laughs> come, come on, Mom. <laughs> She'll follow you out kind of in a daze. Yeah. And he's kind of leading her in the same manner that he would, like, bring her from the couch to an actual bed um, through the woods. Uh, I would like... Okay, with Shannon leading, I would like uh, everyone to roll a investigate as you go through the woods. Two 
two successes for me. Two on okay, the side. Shannon. <laughs> Shannon, you don't notice anything because you're not real sure what to look for. And so what the rest of the party sees that piques their interest, you would have no context for it. Um, and so as everyone else is moving through the woods, Shannon, you, as you said, you were leading on ahead. You pass by the poster of David Bowie that seems to be blowing against the tree and just trash you know left by somebody and as you go further along there is a uh a, a cut out from a magazine of david lee roth midair jumping into a split and it's floating against one of the trees and kind of seems to be plastered there for a moment but the rest of you as you creep past the position that shannon was in you look around and you see that there is on both the David Bowie poster and on the magazine, there are punched out holes in the corners of each. And it seems to be some type of yarn or string had previously held both of these aloft in some type of display. Hey, is this, is this a, where that tree was? What? She, 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 she's back? Hello? What's going on? We're like almost there. <clears throat> Remember we told you about that crazy tree with like the elf girl in it? Yeah. Van Halen. Yeah, I think this is where the tree was. Okay, well, it's not here anymore. Yeah, but this wasn't like this before. What, because there's some trash here? Yeah. I mean, like, trash comes from the city, wind blows no, it no, in. No, 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 there was, like, all, this was all here before, but, like, I think it all, like, it all teleported with her when the tree disappeared. Okay... So what does I, that mean? I, I didn't touch the tree. No, Bud's touched the tree. And Sam. Yeah. What is the significance of touching a tree? I don't know. We had to like touch the tree, and like we had. I think someone had to name her something. I think she named her. Did she name her Van Halen? No, she named her something else. I forget what it was. But um, they had to give her a name, and there was something about. It, she had to, it teleported her home, and one of them, I think, could call her back for a quest. I, we never did it. Okay, so try try the name and call her back or something. I don't know her name. Victoria? I, I... Fairy or elf girl? <laughs> that wasn't it. Obviously. Do you guys remember what it was? Uh, no. Damn. No. I didn't even touch those, the tree. That's true. <laughs> those of those of you that rolled good invest or rolled any successes on your investigation, um, you would hear bleeding through the wind in the direction of Teletran to the first few notes of Van Halen's Panama, which is also on the Spotify playlist. Drink. I, I I can't remember what the name is. We'll have to find someone. I don't know. Rob's gonna take off. He's gonna hear the music and kind of look at everybody else and just kind of take off in the direction, thinking that they all heard it too, not saying anything. You guys see Rob run off. Rob, what the hell? Is the mu music coming from the same direction as the teletram? Yep. Okay. Um. Yeah, he looks around. And says, hey, he just leave Ping there? Uh, anyway, uh, and he like starts helping his mom <laughs> further through the woods. <laughs> In that same direction. Mm -hmm. As you all move with Rob taking point now, Rob, as you burst through into the clearing that is the Grav Truck Graveyard, 
you quickly identify your cube that holds Teletran 2, the secret base headquarters of your group, and standing atop of the green structure painted by George Butts to blend in, um, you see a figure standing with a sleeveless shirt, one shoulder exposed, hair blowing in the wind, as Van Halen is on top of the of the Falcon, summoned by George Butts. What? Oh, Rob, you see it first. What do you do, buddy? Uh, Rob's gonna see her and do like one of those like '80s, yeah, jumps as he's running towards the Teletran. And he's just gonna. Butts did it! Butts did it! And he's gonna keep running towards the uh, Teletran to get all up in it. What did he do? And he's just gonna keep pointing at uh, Van Halen. And as you all would enter into the clearing, you too would see Van Halen, uh, the small appears to be no older than 13 girl standing atop the construct of the cubed grab trucks. But as soon as she sees Rob coming, um, she jumps from the top a good 40 feet in the air and floats down to the ground and lands lightly in front of Rob as he walks up. What? Uh, Rob's then going to immediately realize that him and Van Halen really never had the connection like <laughs> Van Halen and Butts. He's just been like, you know, a friend of a friend that's been around kind of like, hey, yeah, I kind of know you. So he's going to see her and go, hi. She nods and puts her hands on her hips and she says, where's George? Uh, um, he, uh, the, he, uh, duel of, uh, f f fates with his dad. Strangely, she seems to accept that explanation. Um, okay. Well, he, he called me and he said he was fighting in a place called the Loop. What do we do? And the rest of you run up, hearing the end of that. What do we do about what? The 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 George George told her loop. George loop what? Yeah, I didn't even get that one either. He 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 told her um uh about the loop. Uh, she steps forward and places a hand on Rob's shoulder. George called me. He said he was fighting in a place called The Loop. Oh. That's what I s s said. Oh. That's that's where we came from. They're taking over the town. Her so eyes narrow, but you can tell that she really doesn't understand what you're talking about. Okay. Um, so... He called you back for a quest, right? Um, okay. So, okay. So we went to the loop. The loop is a place. Uh, it's the same place where the bad guys are trying to cut down your tree. Remember that? Uh, the robots. Um, yes. He's there. Um, I think his dad's there because his dad works there and we saw that he was there. Um, um, but everyone else in town is getting taken. And if they get taken, they're going to be taken there to be, I think, turned into robots, I guess. I don't know where Butts is. He's gone. And Sam's gone too. Her eyes narrow now at the admission that Sam is no longer around either. Where is everybody at this loop thing? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's where we well, left. Let's go. Oh, Point we, the direction. No, we, we just came from there. We have other people we need to, to find first before... Also, hi, I'm Shannon. Um... Her eyes narrow. 
we got to find people first before we leave. And then I guess we could go back to the loop. But if George called you, I think he's okay and doesn't need our help right now. Or he's dead. Hmm. Would you stop being so negative? First, you told me that I couldn't get the car through the woods, and look what happened. I got it through the woods most of the way. So I'm trying to be realistic. Okay, be realistic, but positively. George says he's a lover and not <laughs> a fighter. Nothing he's nice barely to a say, lover. You say it at all, as the grown-ups say. Okay. You, you got it to the woods. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I got it through the woods and to the edge of the woods. Van Halen is looking and listening to all of this understanding very little, but at Shannon's admission that she made it through the woods, she kind of looks and nods. You're from the woods. Sure. I like spending my time in the woods. She seems to accept this without question. Good. Yeah. Are you from the woods? Oh, yes. She, 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 she is the woods. That's pretty neat. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the robots are taking the whole town. Okay, yes. Can we get Shame your right. mom and... What was her name again? May. May. Safe in the trucks. And then I need to get my bike back. Uh, you can... So I can drive fast to places? Because we don't have a car anymore. Rob can take you on the Pingmobile. Uh, Rob's going to look at May. I have the Pingmobile. Sharon also she shoots daggers at, at Mitch for saying that to her. Uh, May doesn't seem concerned that you have the Pingmobile. If anything, uh, she seems relieved that the Pingmobile is still in one piece. Um, can, do, we, do we just leave Van Halen here with my mom and May? It's probably safer than leaving them alone, I, I guess. Take me to George. I, I don't Hold on. Sense. Stop. Wait a minute. George called her to help somehow. But we can't go to George right now. So she can help us with other things so we can get to George faster. Okay. What other things? Getting people? I guess we have a spare well, bike yeah. if he takes the pingmobile. Okay, hold on. We gotta get Mr. Derry. Yeah. We should probably see if Ben is okay and maybe magically woke up. Who knows? Um... Who else can help us? There was like Mr. Mitchell. Yeah, my, my dad is somewhere. My dad's somewhere. I don't know where he is. Yeah, so maybe we can try to find him. <gasps> maybe she can help us find him. Okay. Uh, have you ever seen uh, an invisible robot man? How do you see something invisible? He turns to Robin <laughs> and Jerry. Guys, he's invisible. Yeah. Like the predator. Yeah, he, 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 yeah. Mitch, he, he, your d d d dad's a p p predator. He punches that him in the really shoulder. He punches him square in the shoulder. Um, okay. Uh, you, wait, you know what? Um, Van Halen, do you know any. I, you're like a tree elf, right? Do you know any magic? Is that a thing? What do you mean? Like, the elves in the books, they know magic. What books are you reading? The ones about magical elves. The Hobbit. Wrong books. No? Okay. Um, what can you do besides dance? Sam said she could. She wailed on George's dad. Oh. It was kind of violent for an elf. I yeah, am but... not an elf. I am a tree, and I can wail. Dryad. She just hits like a wicked freaking vocal solo. Wail! <laughs> okay, can you wail and find his dad? No, no, wait. If she can wail on people, uh, the, 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 the hospital, it's swarming with those guys. And it has Butts' mom and Ben there. Maybe whoever 
Jerry can take her there. We got to get somebody He's who knows the loop. Any. And then we got to go stop the loop. Sort of. But dad. I can't really get to him. I could try to call him, but he probably won't answer. Or he's a robot. Oh, I don't know. Okay. It's not like there's a robot test that you can perform on somebody. Yes, there is. And uh, Jerry will smack Rob in the back of the helmet. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 scanner. <laughs> to the helmet. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, the helmet lets him see who's a robot. Whatever. Um, so what I s said. What day of the week is it, by the way, Greg? It would be Friday now. Friday. Yeah, her dad would still be at work. She, he does military. He doesn't work directly for the loop, but security and, and all that kind of thing. Um... Yeah, she probably wouldn't be able to reach him because he wouldn't have his personal phone on him because that would be security issue. Okay. And it would also be about the size of a house. Yeah, it's the yeah. 80s, bruh. Yeah, I know, but military communications. Even bigger. True, yeah. yeah. Didn't uh, they try to hire Mr. Derry, though? Maybe he knows. Yeah, we, we have to go get Mr. Derry. Um, well, let's do it. Okay, so, uh, shit. <laughs> While we stand here and talk, they're probably killing okay, my mom. Okay, fine. Oh you two, gosh. take a bike, and he points to uh, to Jerry and um, uh, Van Halen. Go to the hospital. Wail on people. Find the two of them. You two, and he points to Rob and Shannon. Take the pingmobile. Get Mr. Derry. Get your bike. Get to the hospital. Steal an ambulance. I'll do something. <laughs> You're going to just... You know what? I'll figure it out. Time it. Yeah, I'm Ooh. taking your bike. It's got the pegs. Go for it. Whoa, 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 whoa. What about me? She'll stay here with my mom, and I'll try to find my dad. And he points to the radio tower that he has erected on top of the the uh, teletran too. Oh, oh, okay. And Rob's gonna go to the ping mobile and prop it up and get in the driver's seat. Man, this one bad. Which, le which leads me to the next question. Uh, Shannon, as you approach the moped or the scooter that is the ping mobile, and Rob takes the driver's position of said ping mobile, um, is this something, Shannon, who presumably has been driving a motorcycle much longer than Rob would have been driving the Pingmobile. Is this something that Shannon is comfortable with? I'm giving you the look that Shannon would be and she's just not having it. She motions to Rob to be like, you there. <laughs> uh, uh, Rob's gonna be like, <laughs> But it's the ping mobile. I don't care what name you gave it. I'm driving. Oh. And he's just going to kind of scooch, scooch, scooch. Thank you. She gets in the driver's seat. And Shannon, as the ping mobile roars to life, uh. Right. With, the, with the, all the power of a gas-powered uh, leader, um, you guys head off towards Garrett proper, where now we're going to have Jerry and presumably Van Halen as they move where? Um, last known position was the school. Uh so probably back to the school. Um, and he's probably explained to Van Halen, like, like, if you help me get Mr. Derry, Mr. Derry can help us get to George. Wait. Yeah, she's catching about every other word. Every time you say George, she goes, take me to George. But we're going to the school because I have to get my motorbike. Yeah, you guys are going to the hospital because she can wail yeah. on the school. Right. <laughs> right. 
Well, Jerry's not terribly smart. Neither is this player. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you guys are pedaling into town proper uh, on the bike uh, with Van Halen riding the pegs, or is Jerry riding the pegs and Van Halen is... Van Halen cannot ride a bike, so yes, yeah. Jerry. Okay, so um, with the approach of those two, uh, we will take travel time into consideration as we stay with Mitch. Mitch, what are you doing as you see the majority of your team go off into Garrett? To be frank, Greg, he has no idea. Uh, he has no idea if his dad has radio comms in his robot head. Uh, he has no idea how to contact his dad. Um, but, uh, he is going to climb into Teletran 2 and assist his mother and, uh, May and, into getting in there. And in the course of, oh, ten hours, does it look any different? Uh, yeah, there's quite a few bunks that fold down in there, more pegs, all of the equipment is up on a uh, magnetized pegboard type of area. Uh, the only other thing other than this kind of cleaned nature of the inside of the Falcon, your robot is gone. Shit, Greg, that's <laughs> my go-to. Um, okay. Uh... Yeah, I think his first thing is, like, to look around and figure out what the hell is different. Um, and then he would go to the uh, the map, the like, the the dashboard, right? That has, like, the you know, targeting, the, the GPS targeting. Um, and he's going to try to mess with that, seemingly. It, it, it seems to be having its own sentient AI going on here to try to track down his robot. Because he knows the robot was holding tools that he, like, definitely threw. So he knew something was up with the robot. Um, so he's going to try to track either the robot or his dad in any way that he can. Uh, roll me a program or a tinker, and then we will pull away from the scene as we get to Shannon on the ping mobile. One success with tinker. Okay. So you're getting a feel for that green kind of wire 3D as you begin to kind of filter through different areas in and around Garrett. And as the Pingmobile is a little bit faster than a pedal bike, you all descend upon the... You can look up and you see um, Edgar Allan Poe Middle School, and there are two SUVs, one parked in the parking lot, one that's kind of cruising around the exterior of the space over and over in a circuit. You guys are still hidden in one of the... Uh, more like a footpath in the woods, um, right up beside the parking lot is where Shannon's motorcycle would be. And yeah, uh, for anybody, yeah, you, you you hit it in the woods and camouflaged it well. Um, you can look and still see kind of like the rough shape of where you had hidden it, so it's still there. Uh, everybody, queue up alone as the players tell us what they're gonna do. Um, well, Shannon's gonna get her bike. Well, actually, no, because they need to get Mr. Derry, but we don't know if he's still inside. Crap. Um. Um, Rob's gonna uh, flip his visor down and see if, see if he's picking up any signals. Roman, investigate. Can do. Mm -hmm. All clear. No, no signs of the Decepticons. I still would rather not be seen. So, what? Would you do you want to stay in out here, or do you want to try to get into the school? Well, we can try it's the side door. The, those are usually unlocked after hours. Okay, let's try. Rob's gonna like get down low and crouch walk through this open parking lot. <clears throat> Are you guys bringing the Pingmobile, um, or are you leaving it at the far side of 
this space? Um, you have about a hundred yards of open ground, then you hit the parking lot and then the school. So if you leave the ping mobile here, in theory, it's going to be quite a distance away from where Shannon's motorcycle would be. If you're thinking of using it as an escape. Let's clean it up against the school. Maybe. I think it would serve much better as a distraction. Uh, Rob is having a crisis because he knows what happened the last time he fucked up the Figmobile. But he's too much of a, a sissy to stand up to Shan, so he's gonna... Yeah, yeah. Well, Do you know he's, he's, still gonna, he's still gonna pull the keys out of it, though. Yeah. I was going to say, if you wanted to stand up to her, you could roll a lead, and that wouldn't mean that you could ignore her. It just means that if you're looking for a mechanical way to d decide whether or not Rob got some gumption, that is a possibility. No, a scary lady is a scary lady. He's not going to test that. <laughs> I agree. I, I wouldn't do anything that Shannon didn't tell me to do either. I was just wondering if you wanted to try. No, maybe maybe if he saw Jerry stand up to her. He might he might grow some, but no, <laughs> Jerry bends, so he bends. All okay, right. so what are you guys doing with the ping mobile? Just leaving it here? Yeah. I would leave it purposely out in the open. Like close the distance between them and the school, but not at the entrance that they're going to. Like not immediately where the entrance is, so that at least it gives them a few more minutes. Okay, sure. Yeah, I see what you're doing. Um, okay, uh, go ahead then, and the ping mobile will buy you one additional point in your sneak. So if you guys are trying to go across, the ping mobile is going to act as a bit of a distraction. So you can each add one to your, okay. your sneak. Don't roll like crap, roll 20. Are you kidding me right now? Rob's the wind. It's like delayed uh, too. Like my my rolls are taking a good 30 seconds to go through. I haven't had any successes this entire time, have I? Oh no, the first two. Hold on. Yeah, you did. Uh it's it, it's having it's it's being a bit difficult tonight. <laughs> But um, you can roll a luck. We're in a new session. So if you wanted to use luck, you may. I only if get not, one luck. If you want to use it, you can. If you don't want to, you guys creep across the open area. Uh, Rob, you're able to kind of just taking angles and, you know, going behind a dumpster here and there. You kind of make it to the school faster than Shannon. Um, Shannon, just as you are getting to... Uh, you're going, you guys are going to the school first. So as you're going to the side door that Rob had indicated is usually left open, um, Rob, you get there and the door is in fact open. And as you creep it and slow it to the point where you're hidden by the door itself, an SUV rolls around the corner. And Shannon, you are about 10 feet from this door when you hear the gas accelerate in the SUV as it and seems to have seen you. Hmm. Uh, I think she would tell, uh, she would just turn, like, bear, she wouldn't even turn to Rob to indicate there's somebody else there with her, and she'd be like, go find him. Rob disappears inside. What does Shannon do as the SUV accelerates towards your position? Well, I don't know if they're trying to mow me down, but she's going to hold her ground. Okay. Yeah, you are off the, you're like kind of on the footwalk a bit. Uh, this is coming down the road. And as it roars and pulls up, you see no one is driving. But as the passenger side door opens, you see one of the orderlies that tended to uh, George Butts' mom get out. And as he rounds the corner, he looks and says, I know you. Hi. What are you doing here? And he begins to walk towards you. 
kind of bored. There's like weird stuff going around town, so I figured I'd come here. Nobody likes going to school, so I figured it'd be empty. What a great idea. Why don't you let me get you somewhere safe? As he continues to close the gap. I'm good. You should probably like stay right there. I'm actually really sick and contagious. <clears throat> oh, we better get you to the hospital then. Ten feet. Eh. Maybe not. This is a terrible idea, but she's going to try to body check him and get into the SUV. <laughs> You're going to... Okay. So, uh, as you body check him, roll me a force roll. Whoa! <laughs> I think There's you the... just got superpowers, too. <laughs> Literally Shannon. how Rob goes. That's literally how, how Jerry gets superpowers. Yeah. What? Shannon is made of concrete. <laughs> so as this guy reaches down for you, uh, describe how Shannon blows this guy up uh, to the point where he goes flying in a heap <laughs> and you hear some type of... It's not a crack, but it sounds more like distressed plastic that's sort of bent on um, like a piece of lawn equipment or lawn furniture just before it gives that sickening white, you know, and you hear something like that coming from this person. But how do you do it? Uh, I think Shannon, she'd kind of like brace her back leg to push off of and just go running towards him. And she would actually use the point of her elbow to check him into the stomach as she kind of like swings sideways and goes around him. <clears throat> So in a heap he goes, uh, you don't hear the expulsion of breath, you don't hear any type of groan of pain, um, you do hear, however, what sounds like somebody dropping a bag full of gutters and plastic PVC and uh, bricks into the, you just hear, and this sound as it crunches and rolls down a bit of a rise, and you have a clear shot to the SUV. Okay, um... I think she would get into the SUV uh, and then, uh, yeah, she's going to use it because it's a good SUV, I'm guessing, right? It's pretty nice, yeah. And by the way, just to uh, chat, yeah, go ahead and queue up the touch by Stan Bush. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, she would definitely, she would get into the SUV and I think she would just, drop the pedal to the metal it's not human okay uh as you <laughs> jump into the suv um, <laughs> shannon would see uh roll me and investigate as you're going in fast and you kind of slide over the hood to get into the passenger side and jump over god damn it that's all the success i'm gonna get is that one five roll and that's it <laughs> Okay, so as you jump into the SUV and slam the door, get over to the driver's side, and you hit the gas and it goes, but the wheel doesn't obey when you begin to turn it, and you don't know what's going on as you rock it through the parking lot, squeal as the wheel turns independently to the left, and it's only then that you see a little purple tape deck embedded in the dashboard of the SUV and it seems to be playing something and you hear the police start to assault your eardrums with the lovely words of Sting. But we're going to cut back inside as Rob, the door closes behind you and you hear the squeal of SUV wheels as you're running through the, presumably through the hallway. Yeah, Rob's just going to be at a dead sprint, taking a pivot step to look into the class, each classroom to see if Mr. Derry is there. Roll me an investigate as you go through. Whew. 
Okay, so as you're going through trying to keep as quiet as you can, almost doing, you know, like a uh, uh, Ferris Bueller where you're running and then stopping as you get to the door, run, then stop, uh, doing a little bit of Ed Rooney action. As you look into the classrooms, the first two that you pass by, you see that in one there are four students that you vaguely recognize from uh, various grades that are staring at the blackboard and all of them are on the blackboard is that red beat that doo -doo, going across the actual surface of um, where you would usually apply chalk, but it is a red LED doo -doo, as it's going across and they're all just staring at that board. And when you go through the next room, you see six in this one, three in this one, as you're cruising through what seems to be some type of holding facility. Uh, uh oh. Um, Rob's going to make a beeline for Mr. Derry's room room. His room. Okay. And with those two successes, I'll give you this. As you go around the corner um, to Mr. Derry's lab, you see that the lab is fortified. There's desks on the inside. You can see that the small window has been uh, shattered inside the door itself. Um, you see that it looks as if it's been through a siege. Rob wants to approach it quietly and calm. Let me a sneak then, yeah. Minus the extra I got for the thing, right? Yes. Okay. Rob, you sneak forward and you're even able to kind of hop up onto one of what would be called like a teacher's desk, a larger desk that's used to uh, form this barricade on the outside of the door. You have been able to pull yourself up to the portal window and you see inside <clears throat> with that investigate, you can see what looks like a leg sticking out from behind Mr. Derry's desk. Do these look like Mr. Derry's shoes? With that investigate, yeah, you notice that he is in fact wearing what look like uh, running shoes. These are generic Velcro laced uh, blue and yellow track shoes. Okay, he wants to Hands and knees crawl to Mr. Derry, and the whole time going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, 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 oh shit, shit, shit. The whole time just trying to be as stealth as possible. You are able to creep into the area, and as you're whispering this and you round the corner, you see Mr. Derry with his back up against his desk. Um, he's very pale, and you see him holding his side where it looks as if he has suffered some type of still bleeding wound as he turns and as you come across uh, come around the corner he looks at you rob and says watch your mouth young man <laughs> mr Derek, you're alive what happened there they're gonna take over. Listen, and he looks at you and his eyes are bright, but they seem to be staring a bit over your shoulder, Rob. Who, who's with you? It's Shannon, Shannon. Locke? Yeah. Good. Um, they put us in the schools. Yeah, yeah. If something. They listen. If something goes wrong with the loop, they put one of us in the schools. The loops do things. Kids can see it before the adults can. It's. It's like a failsafe when the accelerators do things. The. The kids tell stories about them first. They're the ones that see the 
the strange that the adults dismiss so they put us in the schools. We, um, if we hear strange things, we know something's wrong. Something's really wrong. You guys have to get to the loop. They've got the adults. They've got us all. They, they tried to get you all, but <laughs> they didn't get you, I guess. Um, I think you guys are by yourselves. No, 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 Mr. Derry, we're getting you out of here. We have you. I'll only slow you down, Rob. And he reaches up and he taps your helmet. And then I transform into a dope ass car thing. <clears throat> no, well, I mean, you're. <laughs> your... uh, okay. You, you. Don't listen to. You have to be optimist now, Rob. All of you do. It's too soon. They. It's too soon, but, um, they put us in the schools. They, if something happens with the loop, they, the kids, I said that. <laughs> Who'd you come here with? Oh, no, Mr. Barry is dying. Roll, um, a, roll a, um, investigate. Okay, this I got two theories right now. We're about to Okay. See which one's right. When he turns and looks over your shoulder, his eyes still clear. Who'd you come here with? And when he looks back at you, you see a go through his right pupil, and in your helmet you hear Decepticon. Oh no. <laughs> I was gonna no. Um <clears throat> Rob's gonna fall back onto his hands and kinda crab walk, push himself away and start saying shit oh shit oh shit oh shit oh shit oh shit again. Um does this Deceptidary look like he's gonna be up and about chasing me anytime soon? No, he still looks just as hurt as he did when you walked in. Okay. And when you look at him, he looks back, and for a moment, the eyes seem to focus more on you. And he says, watch your mouth, young man. It's up to you all now. Uh, Rob's going to stand up and disregard stealth and beeline it for the front door. As you are running towards the front door of the school down the large staircase that measures the past accomplishments, both athletic and academic, of Edgar Allan Poe Middle School, um, you hear footsteps coming from various points of the linoleum surface as your own shoes echo through the hallways. And just as you get down to the large four bank double doors ready to push them push and burst out through the middle set you see an suv go screeching past the front and in through the slightly tinted uh driver's side window you see shannon as she's presumably fighting with the steering wheel but that's neither here nor there as we go to the hospital and we have jerry and van halen arrive yeah, I think I think Jerry got about halfway to the school and then he was like, oh, I'm not going to the school. And he changed directions. OK, so you were you're able to get to the uh, hospital. You look down and you don't see anybody. There are no SUVs in this area. There is, however, a green cement mixer. That's a, that's a Constructicon. 
I don't care. We th you think we can take it? What do we want to do with it? Well, it's... Where are we taking it? Remember when the robots tried to cut down your tree? Yes. It's the same thing. It doesn't look like the same thing. It looks like, uh, uh, what do you guys call those things? Cars? Yeah. Yeah, but you know how, like, you look like the same thing as me, but you're not? Um, I'm sort of insulted, but sure. I feel like I'm insulted now, too. It's not important. We got to get in the hospital. And we got to get Ben. And I know they said we got to get George's mom, but she's probably a Decepticon. She was eating grass. Ooh. Okay. We got to get Ben, though. Ben knows stuff. And Ben's our friend. I remember Ben. Yeah. Well, he's, he's in the hospital. And if we get Ben, maybe we can take him back on the bike. We got to get an ambulance. I really wish somebody who could make plans came for this plan. Is 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 Ben in there? And she points towards the hospital. Yeah. Yeah, he's in a room. She jumps off the bike and starts walking towards the hospital. I mean, Jerry's <laughs> Jerry's no planner. He'll he'll probably like glance around and drop Mitch's bike and follow her. <sighs> okay. Uh as she descends, maybe ten steps ahead of you. Um, you hear the rumble of the cement mixer's engine start up, and for everybody listening at home, please fire up the Human League, Human. And as the cement mixer begins to rumble through the fairly vacant parking lot in front of the hospital, it comes forward, and even the mixer on the back begins to begins to spin as it seems like it's on a collision course with Van Halen, who is paying it no mind as she seems fixated on the doors of the hospital. Uh, I think Jerry will yell a warning. Look out! She turns around and this thing is, you can see like the grill of it moving closer from behind. Look out for what? It's, it's good to... Um, Jerry will try to push her out of the way, grab her and like drag her inside the hospital, maybe. Sure. Roll me a, uh, I'll, I'll take a force or a move from Jerry. I've got better odds on force with three successes. So you scoop up, um, Van Halen, who is a little heavier than you would expect her to be, but not significantly so. And she's still looking at you. Look out for, as you're carrying her into the hospital, the cement mixer speeds up and tries to adjust for your intervention, but it can't use, it doesn't have the geometry to make the, the turn radius, but it does take off and have a wide kind of looping turn as it seems to be trying to beat you to the hospital but with three successes you rush through the open doors and into the darkness inside it seems to be coming though for the emergency room entrance oh and it's dark inside and quiet very quiet the human league seems to be playing though that's so weird um <laughs> I think I think uh, Jerry will just like try to get a, a beat on a hallway in the hospital and just go for it. Okay. So you make it into the hospital. Um, are you continuing? Are you stopping once you get inside, or are you heading like for Ben's room? Uh, probably directly for Ben's room. Okay, so as you continue to like sprint through the area, 
it's about 10 seconds later that you hear this massive crash as the cement mixer blows into the emergency room, renting the metal and glass and thrusting it inward, collapsing and destroying the automatic glass doors through the waiting room, through the prefab seats. It busts all the way through to the ignition desk before it stops and the lights flare on. And for a moment, you holding Van Halen as you're running through the uh, hallway beyond, you're illuminated in silhouette and shadow as you round the corner heading towards Ben's room. Look out for that. She looks over. Oh, and she looks back at you. Thanks. I think he'll like trust her her to move on her own now and like put her down and try and try and remember where they had been last he was here. Um you do remember you've been here a couple times and as you get deeper into the hospital you re- there's still As you go by each room, you see that there are people in certain rooms. None of them seem to be awake. Um, And when you get to Ben's room, there he is. We gotta, we gotta get him out of here safely somehow, but those machines might be keeping him alive. They seem powered down. And she's looking at the machines, like tapping them. She does not, she has no clue (laughs) where she is or what she's doing. And she's just looking at Jerry. There he is. She points at Ben. You're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick him up and I'm gonna carry him. And then we're gonna go down that hall the opposite way we came because maybe there's another way out and I don't know we gotta find a way to get him back to the other guys can we all fit on the bike I can't I can't pedal it and hold him hmm he's he's in a coma okay Okay, I think Jerry will pick Ben up and have the loosest, stupidest plan in the world. Um, yeah, kind of just pick Ben up in a try to set him up in like a fireman's carry and get him down the hallway. Okay, yeah, you're able to pick him up. He is very small, um, lighter than. Uh, uh, Van Halen, um, he seems even thinner than you remember. Um, you can feel the angles of where his elbows kind of rest against, and it's almost lending a more delicate hold to you, Jerry, as you pick him up. Um, you're able, though, to escape through one of the side entrances of the hospital. But when you open and look out, you do see that there are several of the emergency vehicles here. There's an an ambulance, there's the hearse, the the meat wagon, as you guys call it. Um, But there's also a dump truck that seems to be driving in this particular area of the parking lot. Oh, we are so screwed. Do you... Look, I know know you're not magic or whatever, but... Do you have any any idea how to drive? This is stupid. No. Yeah. Me either. <laughs> Let's just... Can you distract them so I can get Distra- Ben out of here? Distract who? The, the trucks. She points to the one, that one, and she points to the dump truck that's driving around. Yeah, it, it, Constructicons. Okay. And she walks in the opposite direction, waving her hands. Wait, wait. Oh, 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 
This is stupid. She turns back around, still waving her hands. What? You got to lose him after you distract him and meet me back at the trucks. The other trucks, where we were. Oh, okay. Ready? Break. Sure. And as soon as she breaks, uh, somehow you hear Panama start to play again as uh, it echoes through the parking lot as she's moving her arms and she begins to kind of drop her head and chin to her chest. And immediately the dump truck turns and zeroes in on her and you see her and she turns and it's almost like she's stretching for a second and you see her take her leg and she kicks it up by her head a couple times in an exact rendition of what David Lee Roth would do. And as it begins to gear up and move towards her, she David Lee Roth's her way across the parking lot as she's just kicking and jumping and spinning. And a second later, the mix master comes by and follows, uh, excuse me, not mix master. Of course, that's a name that this thing wouldn't have. The cement mixer comes and follows the dump truck and they are chasing after the dancing Van Halen until she disappears into Garrett. The coast is looks clear what would you like to do jerry um well as previously established jerry doesn't know how to hotwire a car he was really hoping mitch would show him uh but mitch you know wasn't into his criminal element back then so uh he'll probably do a quick quick glance at the ambulance uh the hearse really anything sitting around to see if you know keys might be in the ignition or dangling from the uh visor uh but barring that he's got no choice really but to go on foot um i tell you what we'll we'll make it interesting and go ahead and let's roll a let's just roll a heart uh just a straight heart and we'll see if in fact there are some keys dangling there hey look at that one success so when you look into the ambulance, the, the traditional 1980s orange and white ambulance with the bar of lights across the top of the driver's side, an old kind of Dodge snub-nosed van, um, the door's a little bit open, the dome light is not on, but you look in and you see a set of keys dangling. That is lucky. Um, Jerry will probably get into the back uh and slide ben onto the the uh the gurney that's back there um and shut the doors and and go get into the driver's seat uh yeah now he's talked a lot about having driven before he's never driven before i figured (laughs) so as you turn the key it starts. This is it, Ben. We're doing it. We're doing it. Um, and he's going to do his best to uh, not hit any other vehicles on his way out of this parking lot. Okay. Um, what I'm going to ask you for here is a move. Or I will even take a tinker as you're trying to be as cautious as possible. But uh, I'll take whichever one you'd like there. Move or tinker. That's three successes. So uh, as the namesake would imply, Jerry iron hides his way out, dressed in this case like Ratchet more so than his red van counterpart. And as you perfectly pull out of the parking lot and begin to creep your way towards the grav truck graveyard um, with three successes, you seem to be just another vehicle that's accepted along the streets of Garrett and no one gives chase. Uh, Let's cut back now to Mitch. Mitch, you have learned the following. There is 
an area along the loop that has been given a code name called the Ivory Tower. The Ivory Tower seems to be the last in a line of sequential relays along the loop itself. And for whatever reason, you're gaining additional information as soon as you found this. You are not keying in any type of scan or any type of um, uh, trigger to ask for this information. It is simply being delivered to you via the computer inside Teletran 2. So you see that there is a point of entry into the loop at the ivory tower. The loop is using this relay system or would use this relay system to fully control not only Garrett, but a much larger portion of the United States. It seems that for this sequence or plan of events to uh, succeed for these Decepticons, they need this final relay in place. Without it, the loop will not be online and presumably their hold on the area will slip. It also appears that all of the Decepticon's strength is mustered in this area. Shit. Okay. But no information on RoboDad and the actual robot. <clears throat> Your robot that you were able to scan and look for seems to also be at the ivory tower. Your dad, if in fact this creature is your dad, is nowhere to be found. Okay. Uh, assuming my dad has robot ears, can I make a message loop that just outputs through the radio system? Sure. Um, you can... The Ben's tape deck is there. Yeah. I believe Jerry said he left it there whenever you guys... Perfect. Um, then I will record a message to my dad and hook it up to the CB radio. That's a thing you do. Uh, and have it loop over and over again because that's also a thing you could do with a tape deck. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Um, what I'm going to allow you to do is you can sit there and over the course of the hour or so, as you've figured out this plan, you can put in one of the tapes. You'll have to decide which of Ben's tapes you want to tape over. And you have 60 minutes of recording. So you can just basically hit record and say your message over and over and over again. And it'll last for 60 minutes. Okay, then that's what I'll do. And I think he'll rummage through the tapes and there's, wasn't there one that said Veronica on it? <laughs> or it says Jerry on it? <laughs> it was Jerry for Veronica. Yeah, he goes yeah. through, he pulls that one up, and then he puts that one back in and it keeps going through, and he pulls out one of, like, you know, not one of Ben's hits, like Summer Jams 1984, and it wasn't, it wasn't really good. It wasn't a good year for Summer Jams. <laughs> You, you see one that's fresher than the others. The casing seems to be not as dulled or worn, uh, and written on the outside are predominantly air supply and Lionel Richie hits. Perfect. That one gets erased. <laughs> um, and he records uh, the worst message. Uh, it's super vague. It just says, uh, hey, Dad, could really use your help. Go into the ivory tower. Hey, Dad, could really use your help. Go into the ivory tower. Hey, Dad. And he just does that for an hour and then finds a way to hook it up to the CB radio to play through. Okay. And so as all of this is going on, um, roll me an investigate check. Shit. Okay. Let's see what happens here. <laughs> One success. As you're standing and delivering and kind of moving about the, the structure, uh, at one point when you go up to kind of check on the, the antenna, you look around and towards Garrett, you can see and hear just a little bit of Panama from Van Halen, but that's not exactly what you're looking at as you see that there appears to be like an F-14 flying in the sky high above Garrett, 
it's odd because you're used to seeing the trails coming off the back of it just as they have a linear flight path this one is flying almost aggressively in dips and circles and figure eights in the air as it is flying over and over garrett uh i think he he drops the 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 tape deck uh and he immediately runs the cb radio from wherever he is uh and he starts keying the mic uh and he says teletran 2 teletran 2 any transformers teletran 2 any transformers and he's trying to call out to anyone who has their michi talkie on does anyone have it on them (laughs) Uh, I would probably say that each group probably had one. So Jerry would probably have one, and either Shannon or Rob would have one. Um, who would have it between Rob and Shannon? Wherever uh, Rob is on this. Um, that looks like Rob, right? <laughs> Rob's going to have it just kind of clipped onto his... Yeah, and wouldn't be carrying one. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you would just, you would just we, hear squawking back. Transformers, this is Teletran 2! Am I receiving this message as I'm making my panicked run out of the school? Yep, and because you have yours hooked up through the Walkman headset that goes into your helmet via the boon that was given to you by Ben, you can actually hear it coming straight through. And using the mic that already exists as it was wired in there for Mitch, you still have the pack on your your hip, but uh, you were able to respond and continue to run as you see an SUV squealing through the parking lot in front as you burst through the doors. What do you say, Rob? Go ahead. Starscream is on the scene. Repeat, Starscream is on the scene. Oh, no. Um... Rob's just gonna yell back one problem at a time. It has I, guns! <laughs> As you burst outside, Rob, and you hear all this going on, you look up just in time to see that the jet that's very easy to see in the sky goes across and uh we're gonna cut to shannon inside the suv shannon you are fighting against this wheel but you have identified the uh tape deck that seems to be playing some lovely police hits inside the dashboard okay um is there anything in here that i can use to pry it out I will tell you what, just as we did before, roll me a heart. And if the heart is successful, then we will see if there's something readily available for... (laughs) Shannon has no heart. That is correct. (laughs) No, Shannon... Start kicking it then. (laughs) Okay. So as you're sitting there kicking it, um, what I want you to do is every so... As soon as you hit the first kick, you hear the brakes hit and you start pitching forward make a move roll for me as you're gonna have to move out of the way as you're not buckled in in this place and it's starting to accelerate and then hit the brakes trying to jostle you about inside thank you yeah it hits the brakes You throw your, and with two successes, what I'm going to say that you do, Shannon, uh, Meta, as soon as it hits the brakes, you perfectly time a kick and use the actual momentum as it goes forward. Your foot and boot crack into the casing. You hear Sting warble a bit. And you're able to see a crack form in the front. You think you might be able to pry this thing out with your fingers. It might hurt, but... uh, you know, you've damaged it to the point where it's askew a bit as it continues to roar down the road. Yeah. It seems to be picking up speed, though. I am prying that thing out. Okay, roll me a force. So with one success, you pull the corner up, and as soon as the corner pulls free, Shannon, the wheels lock again but this time it's a gradual slowing as almost the instead of the brakes being depressed the gas was released and 
the car moves and it's still drifting and rolling on its own, but you feel the wheel give as if it's unlocked underneath your, and as soon as you move it, you have control of the SUV. In the rear view mirror, as you look, you see Rob run out of the uh, middle school as the doors burst open. Yeah, I like swing the driver's side door open so he knows it's me and be like, did you get him? Uh, Rob's just going to start running towards the SUV when he sees it's Shannon and say, no, uh, no, 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 go, 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 as he's running towards the SUV and trying yeah. to jump in. As soon as he gets to the passenger door, she'll go towards where her bike is. You are able to get there and find it. Uh, there is another SUV in the parking lot, but it has remained parked. It does. It's not moving. It's not monitoring. It's not mobile. Um, and you're able to kind of pull up about 30 feet behind that. And there's your bike. What would you like to do with it? Well, I think she's going to actually look at Rob and be like, do you think we should keep the SUV since it's one of theirs? Yes. I mean, like, I really hope my bike's going to be here when everything's said and done, but at least these, this SUV is big enough if we need to carry more people, you know? If we find people we can save, can't really do that on my bike. Plus, they don't really seem to care about the SUV, at least not now, for now. <laughs> Better than Mr. D Derry's car. Yeah. What happened? Well, oh. was he not there? He, 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 he said Decepticon now. Oh. Um, Crap. We need to g g go to the loop. He, he ch ch changed in front of me. He was a d dairy, d then Decepticon. Dairy Decepticon. He's going to do that like over and over. Okay. Well. <clears throat> Dairy Decepticon. Dairy. Are you okay? Mr. D D they're n n not made, they're ch ch changed. So people are being turned into Decepticons? We ha, 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 have to go to the loop. The loop. He said the, 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 the loop. Well, do you want to go to the loop, both of us, or do you want to get the others first? Everybody. Okay. So should we go to the hospital and see if they need our help, or should we go back to Teletron too? Back to Teletron. Re re regroup. Okay. Well, you have your radio. Do you want to radio into the to um? Before she even gets it out, he's he's hitting the button. Uh, <laughs> wheeljack. Go for Teletran too. You have to press the button to, to talk. <laughs> But first day on a CB radio, guys. <laughs> Go for Teletrad 2! We're on our way back to the n nest. Tell them I have a, a weird car so they don't freak out. We have a weird car so don't freak out. Okay, watch the skies. What? I synced it. And he's gonna look. He's Rob's just gonna casually look at Sharon and just go Starscream. Okay, great. That's way better than everything else that's happening. It's n n need to know. <laughs> and then he's gonna he hit the mic up. <laughs> Jerry. Jerry still hasn't gotten batteries in his bitchy talkie. Uh, 
Also, Mitch, you would see there is a black SUV coming into, uh, you can look up and see it coming into the grab truck graveyard. As in, uh, not them? Just a strange? Well, I mean, they said there's a strange car coming into the graveyard, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think he, if, if anything was open, he would have, like, slammed the door closed or at least closed it in as, as you know as discreet a manner as possible um does the, did the robot build a lock from the inside <laughs> no <laughs> okay perfect uh he looks to uh he looks to his mom and to may and he like closes the door and he's like okay um hold this door closed and he has one hand holding the door closed and one hand stretching the CB mic as far as it possibly can go. Uh, and he says, uh, Beatbox, this is Teltran 2. Are you in a black van? <laughs> Affirmative. Are you at the base? Are we at the base? Are we at the base? No. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the Flash. No, 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 we're not the Flash. <laughs> I'm not oh, alone. God. Great, I'll pick up the pace. G g great, we'll pick up the pace every time. What? Every every time he includes because <laughs> it's a headset. <laughs> I'm in a headset. <clears throat> so, but every I, I'm including myself. And every time you say I, it's we now. Every oh, okay. Time, every time he says we, he kind of looks keep at you. Like, it's a headset. <laughs> yeah. Radio equals outward speaker broadcast. So every single time I think about it, that's why. Yeah. No, it's probably like it's not tuned at all. So it's probably loud enough in the headset where if we're in an enclosed car, you can definitely hear him talking. Yeah. He just responds. With, just get here. And then he still has one hand, and he like he like hooks it on his jacket and grabs the other, you know, other hand of the door to keep the thing closed. <laughs> and Rob's just gonna go, let's go, and he's gonna grab the like the oh shit handle, and I'm <laughs> it's up to you if you want to speed up or not, or we maintain the same speed. Pedal to the metal, like I uh, said. All right, here we go. <laughs> Nobody's on the road. Shannon's like, this is the best thing ever. Fuck yeah. All right, so uh, Shannon, roll me a. I think we used move for you before for the the drive. Go ahead and uh, takes a little getting used to, but it's, I mean, there's not a massive car crash or anything. You know, a couple curbs get jumped here and there as the the wheel radius is uh, uh, put in the position and learned. But you're on your way. Uh, Jerry's on his way in the ambulance with Ben. But we have a moment in the grav truck graveyard that is going to require, yeah, let's go with welcome in the jungle one more time because of who we have. So as you are holding this, lights begin to flash along the front of Teletran 2. And you hear like warning klaxons go off as a they all start going off and to the point where your mom kind of bleary eyed looks up and as you're inside hand against the door you hear a and feel a as the entire thing rocks shit can I see outside at all? You would have to get into the front compartment, which you guys have a hold to. Yeah. But that would mean. Did it feel like the, the, the shake was from the door or from just like the side of the cube? Sounds like it's part of the cube, because if it had hit the door, you don't believe that you would have been able to hold it closed. OK, um, is <laughs> or are, are are my mother and May helping at all? <laughs> They're, uh, imagine having two highly intoxicated people with yeah. you. They're offering encouragement. You can yeah. do it, but like, <laughs> they're, yeah. uh, okay. I think he's going to uh, grab, uh, man, I'm trying to think of what the inside of a tractor trailer door looks like. 
Uh, there's nothing. There's nothing to hold on to in those things. The, the latch is on the outside. The whole thing is on the outside. Um, yeah, I think he lets go of whatever he's holding. I think he has like his fingers like prying the door in, the one that goes in first. Uh, he lets go, and, and he's going to make a quick dash to the, the, uh, the cab of the truck. At least stick his head out of the hole that leads to the cab of the truck to see what the hell's out there. When you finally get there and look out, you see standing about 25 to 30 feet tall an outline of a humanoid form as a massive arm with three fingers and a thumb pull back and smash into the side of one of the exterior grab trucks. Again, boom, rocking the entire thing. And as it comes around the corner, you see there is a parked SUV. But when this robot comes around, it looks like a large version of the ones that tried to cut down the trees of Van Halen. But this one, instead of having saws for hands, it has the bent and shape of ailerons and wings coming off of its arms as it stands there some of the ports on it still glowing with the jet exhaust as it has just landed and it pulls back again for another punch onto the side of Teletran 2 uh shit uh <laughs> Mitch is gonna go Jerry um yeah, they can't destroy my base. That's not that's my shit. Um, he is going to run back towards the door, uh, like wrench it open, uh, and as quickly as possible slam it close. Like get out, slam it closed, and then grab that little you know that latch that closes them, um, and then run around towards the giant robot. <sighs> okay, yeah, you're able to drop to the ground, and you can see as the grab truck floats you're that 50 right under the same position where jerry became a superhero in everybody's eyes um you're underneath and you can see the feet almost like you're peeking out from underneath the car and watching a human walk around you can see these large split like a-frame feet as they <clears throat> and boom and you see the grav truck move about five feet over top of you do i see any other feet on the ground Roman investigate. One success. You sure do. How, how many other feet, Greg? Just one. And as you see, it appears to be a man wearing brown slacks, a short sleeve uh, button up shirt with a tie. Uh, he's got dark salt and pepper hair with large glasses. It's George's dad. Okay. Uh, Mitch is going to take a calculated risk. At least that's what he thinks. Uh, and he's going to grab, I don't know, a shard of metal, something that's on the ground in this in this junkyard, right? Uh, and he's going to come out from underneath the, the, the grab trucks uh, and just chuck this thing as hard as he possibly can at the giant robot. Um and he like he positions himself like here's the here's the grab trucks. He throws this thing at the thing and he yells, "Hey, Chrome Dome!" And then takes off in whatever direction, like the direction they always come from, right? Like to get in here, assuming that his friends are gonna drive whatever the hell they have in this direction. Uh, so he tries to get their attention and then runs as fast as he can to try to make them come with him. Uh, roll a move roll. Uh, you can definitely hit this thing, but uh, I want you to see how fast you can get away from... I'm gonna luck. Fuck yes. Oh, God. Uh, two successes. Okay, so as you haul ass from underneath the uh, battered grav truck and you start running, um, you immediately hear the thunderous approach and gate of this thing behind you and as you're moving through the other refuse and debris in the grav truck graveyard staying close to the uh, uh incoming road where you know your friends will be returning from you hear the 
boom, boom, boom. And then you hear this odd construct of an intake of air as you hear a and behind you there is a blast of energy as you hit the ground and you see a jet rocket above you pulling up into the sky uh jerry as you're coming down in the ambulance you would see this jet coming from ground zero and rocket back up towards Garrett as it's looping around and seeming to kind of take in a, a, a new position and a new attack vector on your Sancta Sanctorum. Uh, Shannon, as the SUV would come down, you would see along the road ahead of you an ambulance and you would see this jet seemingly buzzing the graveyard. Oh, crap. Uh, that's the thing that they told us to look for, right? That's he said? She, like, looks to Rob, like, is that what we're not supposed to want to have right now? Rob's just gonna... Yeah, yeah, this is Starscream. Okay. Come on, Shannon, we know you're a nerd. The secret's out. Okay, um... I think that's the ambulance that we told them to get, so make sure we intercept them. Um, Shannon's going to kind of drive cautiously towards where the ambulance is going to kind of stop them from going into the middle of the whole thing. Because Jerry, yeah, know. Jerry, roll an investigate to see if you, you're looking straight ahead and you're not used to driving, so roll an investigate to see. Yeah, you look in your side view mirror and you see an SUV and shannon doing whatever she can i'm trying and, uh, to like flag them down through the front windshield like stop stop you would see that jerry old jerry will give it a minute like gas break gas break <laughs> nailed it she makes it look so hard <laughs> But he's, guys, he hasn't guys, like yeah. he hasn't like like pulled up to you either. Uh, he's probably stopped a good twenty feet short, but he stops so proud of himself. Okay, she kind of like comes to a crawl uh, with the car and stops, and she stops to the side, so where like the the windows will meet up essentially. Um, and she motions to like roll down the window. We what? got a problem. Yeah. Do you see that? Also, did you get Ben? Yeah. Okay, good. But I left Van Halen back behind. Oh. She's probably fine. Okay. Okay, one problem at a time, right? Yeah. So... There, there weren't any jets on the Autobots, right? No. <laughs> um. Okay. Park the the ambulance to the side, so we can. I don't even know what to do right now. Me either. Be either. We need to get them out of there. Yeah, we're not going to have enough seats in just that. The SUV? And you're not nearly as good a driver as I am. I'm going to ignore that you just said that, because there's other things that need to be done. As yeah. this pissing contest is getting into its <laughs> second round, um, I'm going to go back to Mitch. Mitch, you see me Starscream rocket up, and as the gray jet comes back around, you can tell... There's no way you're going to make it to the parked ambulance and SUV before getting intercepted. By the jet? By the jet, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't even know that there's an ambulance and a van there. I just assume that that's the direction they're coming from. Um, oh, fuck. Okay, so he's smart enough to make that call, that the jet is going to get him. Uh, he's gonna stop and skid and then, like, scramble in the opposite direction towards the giant robot. And he's gonna try to do the same dumb shit he did the last time there was a giant robot. 
and he's going to try to mount it and start taking it apart while riding a giant robot. Well, it's currently flying, so... Oh, that was the... Oh, shit. Okay. That was the giant robot. Oh, no. That's so much worse than I imagined. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) It's a whole thing. Oh, I thought it was another one. Oh, no. I don't know what to do now, Greg. (laughs) And that's definitely Mr. Butts. Sure shit looked like it. That I saw. Fuck it. That's 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 Megatron. I'm I run towards Megatron. If I can take out their leader, <laughs> I mean that's I know that's not how Starscream works, but if I can take out their leader, hopefully that's something. Uh, so yeah, same plan, just towards a robot man. Okay, as you turn around and head back towards the position that uh, you last saw Mr. Butts, um, when you turn around, while the SUV that he apparently arrived in is still there, he is nowhere to be seen. Shit. He continues running, and he's going to get inside that SUV. Okay. Uh, As you run and jump inside the SUV, you are aware immediately of a purple tape deck implanted in the dashboard. Um, And as soon as you get in, you see, hear, and kind of witness Mr. Butts landing on the ground, uh, his knees giving a bit as he goes, oh, oh. And in his arms are your mom and May. Shit. Damn it, Greg. Uh, He begins walking towards the SUV. And you see him stop and kind of cock his head. Are you in there, Mitch? You practicing your marbles? What? No. Shut up. Uh, And I think he... I I think instinctively knowing what these vans are, he, he comes... He jumps in and then immediately tries to smash this thing. And then, then he hears uh, Mr. Butts's old rigmarole um, as he's trying to destroy Soundwave on this thing. And as all that's going on, uh, we're going to say from the position that the, the two vehicles have that are coming in, the ambulance and the SUV driven by uh, Shannon, you guys can see that there's something terrible going on beyond Starscream as... Butts' dad is, even from this distance, distinguishable um, as somebody that has evoked terror. And you see him carrying May, and you see him carrying Mitch's mom. And uh, you're not sure where Mitch is, but he seems to be approaching the SUV a little cautiously. One success to remove that thing? (laughs) Remove that thing. Sorry. You're getting there, but Shit. it's not out yet. Okay. Wait, what were you removing? There's another sound wave inside this van. Yeah, I know. You're in the van? I'm in Mr. Mr. Butts' van. God damn it. I had nowhere else to run. <laughs> I was going to ram the van, you asshole. There was no one in it. <laughs> what would you guys like to do? I think I think as carefully in a short span of time as Jerry can, he's going to transfer Ben from the back of the ambulance to the SUV. Uh, just kind of propping him up weekend at Bernie style in the backseat. Um, and then sliding in beside him. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. What? Go where? There's a giant robot thing and whatever like what are we supposed to do if we lose mitch i'm gonna kill you let's go go where what do you want me to do just driving if you have a plan right about now is a great time to reveal it because other than driving into the middle of all that and risking all of our lives i have no idea what to do yes Get in there. We got to get Mitch out of there. Get, get, get Mitch. Go to Lou. Yeah. Fine. And she just puts down like all the way. They accelerate all the way to the ground to get in there. Muted. Everybody inside the uh, SUV driven by Shannon. Roll and investigate. 
And then Shannon, roll me a move as you begin your descent into the area. Successes all around. Okay. So you guys are intent upon everything. Um, but it is raw. Uh, let's see. It is Jerry. As you kind of get up to the front of the SUV and you're looking all around, um, the door, you see the passenger side door kind of rock against its hinges. And when you look back, Ben's not there. What? Stop. Stop. Ben fell out. What do you mean Ben fell out? I don't know. I forgot his seatbelt. You can't fall out of a car where the door is closed. It was faulty. Is he in the backpack? We don't have time for this. You want me to get Mitch or not? (laughs) Just stop. I'll get out. I can't do two things at the same time. Fucking wrong. Either Mitch or Ben, okay? No. With that investigate roll too, Shannon, you see that the jet has identified you all as coming in and seems to be changing its course. What would you like to do, forward or back? God damn it. She reverses the car. Let's cut to Mitch as the SUV that was on its intercept course reverses back up as the jet in the air turns to take it into its sights. Mitch, you see George's dad walking forward and he unceremoniously drops your mom and May to the ground. Uh, Mitch is still going to, he's bashing or trying to pry this thing out of there. Uh, that's what he's, yeah, he's, he's got the, the wrench in there. He's trying to pry it out um, while he's seeing him watch, uh, walk towards them. Uh, Mr. Butts walks towards the hood of the car, stands directly in front of it, and watches as you're wailing in there. And he reaches into his pocket, pulls out the keys, and jingles them. What you doing? Practicing my marbles. Uh, do you want force or tinker? <laughs> you can go ahead and force if you want. Okay. Whatever you like. Okay. Tinker, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> He's just bashing this thing. Uh, he has the right. door closed. Like, I mean, it's locked, but like, it's, you know, there's not a lot he can do against a robot man. But he's trying to destroy this thing before it explodes and cuts him to pieces again. Okay. So Mr. Butts goes around to the side and begins to get the keys out as he is going to open the driver's side door. So so like like in any terrible 80s horror movie, he has one hand on the stopper, like the the lever. He's like, good, bam, good, bam. Every time the the stopper goes up, he's trying to slam it down as best he can and then bash the stereo. Okay, so uh, (laughs) as this uh, happens and you continue to do this he almost humors you for a little bit oh okay all right unlock lock unlock lock um meta shannon is driving (laughs) and this thing is bearing down and as you all are looking around ben is nowhere to be found do you see him anywhere because we got problems right now muted i don't know where he fell out I don't think he fell out. She just keeps driving backward like the best she can to to like move. (laughs) There he is. If you ever wonder why we call him Speed Bump. (laughs) She's doing her best to make sure if he is out there for some stupid reason that she doesn't run him over, but... She doesn't think that he fell out of the car. Right. That's that's why I went ahead and told you you don't see him. So it's not like yeah. you're where is he? Where is he? You know, and you run over top of him. Yeah. You don't no. see him. I don't see 
I will ask Shannon this right now. Shannon, this thing has you in its sights and it is coming in hot. Are you keeping the SUV where it is? Are you seeking I would cover? like no, to. Are you? Yeah, no, I would like to try Hollywood move. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm all for it. Sure. 180. <laughs> Drifting <Sure>. style. <laughs> This is gonna be terrible. Okay. okay, Garrett Maryland Drift, let's do it. I uh, give me a move roll. This might require more than one success. You do have your uh uh like I always say, you can use your pride in this one just to make it work if it's something you think would definitely require just making it work. And uh as we do in this one, it doesn't have to necessarily relate to what your pride is, it's just an auto crit for the need for a success. Uh, or you can roll move. It's my five dice. We know how D sixes work with us. Um a five out of six earlier, just saying. Well, fuck it. But it's only one success, so. As you whip the car around, you're able to spin it around almost 180 degrees, but the back quarter panel crashes into one of the pieces of debris. Um, I need Rob and uh, Jerry to roll move rolls here as you guys are getting buffeted around inside the SUV. Jesus. Yeah, Jerry's fine. Jerry doesn't get <laughs> around it. Uh, <laughs> Jerry, this, is, this is fine for Jerry. Yeah, so both of the guys are, are perfectly fine with Shannon's maneuvering. Uh, you do have the road in front of you. Are you trying to, like, draw it away? Yeah. or Okay. So as you roll down through there and roll back up, the, are you going back towards Garrett or off-road, like, into the woods? Off-road. Okay, so you take it off road and you hit the tree line just as this thing kind of screeches over top. Um, it's very difficult for it to see you inside these trees, but you can hear it just above the canopy as it continues to just rock it back and forth. It seems to be tracking you though, even inside this, uh, but you are drawing it away from the, uh, the grab truck graveyard. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, she's going to try to keep, like, between the thicker parts of the canopies, like, avoid any of the cl any potential clearings that are in the forest, essentially, um, and just keep kind of driving, maybe a little bit, like, so that she can see if anything happens, but, like, along the edge, so she can keep track of where they are, so she doesn't, like, want to go super deep into the, into the forest or anything like that. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so as you continue to uh, kind of negotiate your way through this like old timber trail, um, we're gonna cut back to Mitch. Mitch, you see that um, as Mr. Uh, Butts is standing there looking in at you, he cocks his head a bit and with his fist, he punches out the back window on the driver's side, uh, rear driver's side seat. And you can hear his voice now clearer as it's coming through the air instead of impeded by the glass. Get out, Mitch. Mitch is going to try to scramble to the front passenger side and pop that thing off one last time before getting out of the passenger side. Sure, go ahead and roll me a tinker or a force as you go through. Three successes on tinker. You pop it off, and not only do you pop it off, you actually have it in your hand as you... Are you trying to get then out of the car? Yeah, or... he's, trying, he's trying to get out of the, uh, the, the passenger side. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you pop out, and you see uh, Mr. Butts as he kind of slinks and moves much faster than you would expect a man of his age. As he kind of starts to round the truck, what are you going to do? Uh, he jams the, the Decepticon symbol into uh, the pocket of the army jacket. Uh, and then wrench still in hand, he kind of is backing up towards Teletran 2, uh, and he looks to Mr. Butts and says, uh, uh, hey, Mr. B, where's George? 
he's practicing his marbles. And you see the beats of red through his eyes. Great. Where, where, where are you going with my mom? Are you backing away from the area? Yeah, he's backing up towards Teletran too. Okay. As you back up and kind of re-engage into the road, he leaves May and your mom behind as he steps into the road as well, creeping towards you back in the direction of Teletran too. Oh, everybody needs to go to the Ivory Tower. So do you, Mitch. Yeah, I heard about that place. What's going on there? Oh, you're going to find out soon enough. Soon enough. And as he raises, puts his hand into his pocket and pulls it back out, he is holding what looks like a roll of quarters. And he cups his hand around it. Is it a roll of quarters, Craig? There is a roll of pants. It is. <laughs> um, Just like Ben said Jerry could, he's yeah. using quarters. Uh, knowing knowing how Jerry fights uh, and how what he saw Ben drop, uh, or, or saw in the, the, the collections box, uh, he he knows what's about to happen. And you said he saw that the robot move. That you saw Mr. Butts move faster than, than I would have imagined. Yep. Man, if anything, Mitch is consistent. Uh, wrench in hand, friends nowhere to be found. He charges Mr. Butts. <laughs> Before you do so, roll me an investigate. Perfect. Uh, three successes, apparently. Get wrecked. <laughs> Just as you begin your charge, you see a orange and white ambulance explode through the area and run Mr. Butts completely over. And as it runs and turns, you see dirt kicking off the side of the wheels as the ambulance loses control. You hear the drag and whine and the rutting of Mr. Butts as he is driven into the dirt, almost like a, a satellite come to rest at Earth or some type of alien meteor. And as it hits and drags in, Everything goes still, and the clicking of the engine as it comes to rest from an active state, and the driver's side door opens, and Ben looks out and says, You're all clear, kid. Let's blow this thing and go home. Is and the... that's where... Oh, fuck. Is... <laughs> Damn it, Greg. <laughs> Ah, shit! Oh, that was good stuff. That was I. My hands were sweaty. <laughs> uh, super awesome episode, guys. That was super dope, uh, and we didn't need butts at all. Uh, let's go around, do our introductions, hear what you guys thought about uh, about this episode, and then we'll get the heck out of here, uh, guys. This was the penultimate episode. Next week is the season finale. Are you ready for it to end? I'm sure not. Uh, let's go around. We'll start with uh, we'll start with Frags. Frags, who are you? Where can we find you? And what did you think of this episode? I am KW Frags. I thought the episode was excellent, and I cannot wait to see what happens at the Ivory Tower and if there is a childlike princess to which Mitch's robot dad is going to swoop in and help us save. <laughs> It makes a, no sense in without context, but that's how I like my tabletop games, is without context. Perfect. <laughs> uh, let's jump over to Metamancer. Who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? What did you think of this episode? Hi, guys. I'm Metamancer, tabletop, role player, GM, that stuff. Um, I thought today's episode was very nice. I liked it. I got to yell at people, which is great. Always a great time when I get to do that. I got to body check some jackass has been following me around town forever, which was great. Uh, and then I got to mostly succeed at a 180 in a very large SUV. So I feel like Shannon is on top of the world, even though she's, you know, being chased, trying to keep from dying. Yeah, by a sentient uh, aircraft. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, no big deal. <laughs> I am very, very curious to see how everything comes to a head uh, next week and exactly how we how things end uh yeah great time hell yeah 
Uh, Mr. Bitters, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what did you think of today's episode? Um, I'm Mr. Bitters. You can find me here, I'm like a moderator or something. Um, yeah, tonight was uh, action-packed, full of shenanigans, and uh, we learned why Jerry does not make the plans. <laughs> That's true. We did learn at least that. Uh, and last but not least, Greg, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? And what did you think of this episode? Uh, I, oh, I love it. I always love playing with you guys. I apologize. I've been under the weather for the whole weekend, and uh, I, I, I'm a bit out of it tonight. But you guys are absolutely super, super duper fun. I love these characters so much. Uh, honestly, you know, everybody here is we've GM'd and DM'd and all that great stuff. And you always get a group of characters that you just never stop thinking about. And this is definitely a group that I always, when I see something or I hear something, it will remind me of Rob and I, and, and, and how Frags delivers it. Um, I, honest to God, I went, my son had a, uh, uh, he was in a Charlie Brown Christmas play and one of the kids came out on stage and I was like, Jesus Christ, that's Jerry Bake. That is Jerry. If Jerry was like put together, if somebody crafted him from clay, it's Jerry. And uh, I just, I think of these characters quite a bit. I really, really do love them. Um, can't wait to have some fun next week with the finale. But until then, Grimjack21502 on the Twitches and on the Twitters. Join me here. Join me there. We have some fun coming over on the channel. Uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, um, my version of the new... D&D playthrough uh, starts this Thursday at 8 o'clock. Join us and have some fun, but always be back here in the 80s that never was. See you next week. Hell yeah, guys. Uh, like I said, this is the season, uh, this is the penultimate episode. Next week is the season finale, but don't worry, that's not the last you'll see of Atari Twilight in some capacity. Uh, if you haven't caught up, catch up on YouTube uh, or join us over on the Patreon where you guys can get access to this uh, as a podcast, uh, which is super awesome uh, and way easier to listen to in your car or at work. Uh, I know that's how uh, Bitters re listen to this every week. Uh, that being said, let's jump over and host our friends, the Greyhawk channel. They're currently playing some Dungeons and some Dragons, uh, and they're some super cool people. So go check check those guys out and uh from all of us to you guys bye bye